All right, so you guys have been asking for a tutorial on how to install Batacera, the uh, emulation-focused Linux distribution that we've been using on our retro gaming PC. So today, we're gonna show you just how to do that. Introducing the XTM3 from Fantex, micro ATX chassis built for power and performance. Compact yet packed with potential, the XTM3 features support for rear connect motherboards, dedicated radiator space at the top, and triple fan locations at the bottom to help keep your GPU cool. With its innovative layout and sleek, clean design, the XTM3 is ready to take on almost any gaming PC configuration and cooling challenge. Check out the link in the description for more details. Okay, so there's a few things you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need the PC that you're going to be installing Batacera on. You're going to be playing emulated games on mostly older systems, so the system requirements for the operating system itself are actually not very strict at all. It's basically any computer with two gigs of RAM or more from like 2010 onward, <laughs> as long as it's a 64-bit processor. The second thing you're gonna need is a working computer to download Batacera's image on and then flash it to the drive of the destination computer that you're gonna be um, using for emulation. And then of course, with that other computer, you're gonna need a way to access the drive out of the destination computer. So since we're using an NVMe on the retro gaming PC that we're going to be using, I have an NVMe here and I have a little NVMe to USB dock. That's going to be fine for flashing Batacera on there. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is download Batacera. So we're going to go to batocera.org and get their nice little homepage. So you click the shiny button that says get Batacera Linux 42. Click. This choice is going to be easy. What hardware are we running? Of course, it's gonna be a desktop PC, and then we just click download. Now, while this is downloading, you're gonna need a utility to flash the OS image onto the drive. You can use anything like uh, Bellina Etcher, or I personally like Rufus, so let's go ahead and download Rufus Image Tool. Okay, once we've plugged in our SSD through the uh, adapter, we're gonna go ahead and click Show Advanced Drive Properties under Rufus, and click U List USB Hard Drives. Now you're gonna be very careful because whatever drive is selected here is going to be completely wiped by the Batacera image. Boot selection, disk, or ISO image, please select. So we're gonna go ahead and click the select button and then navigate to our Batacera image and then go ahead and click open. Now it'll set these options to whatever the image requests for and then one last check just to make sure that yes, we want to overwrite this two terabyte NVMe that's in our enclosure and go ahead and click start. All data on device, no label, disk five, two terabyte will be destroyed. Okay. And all we gotta do is wait for it to write the Batacera image of the drive. After this is all said and done, the drive will be ready to go into the retro gaming computer. And then all we have to do after that point is just boot it right up. Cool, and once the window pops up and we get this ready symbol right here in Rufus, that means it's done writing the image and we can go ahead and take that NVMe, install it into the retro gaming computer and boot that right up to get straight into Batacera. Cool. So now we just take our freshly flashed SSD and install it into the retro gaming computer and we're gonna go ahead and, and fire it up. And provided that this is the only disk that's in the system, then it should boot straight into Batacera. So first you're gonna get this boot option restoration system. That's the bootloader doing its first time setup and basically getting ready for a normal boot from that point forward. The system should restart and then we should be booting into the OS after that. Text is really tiny on our 4K monitor. <laughs> now, right now, you're gonna see this resizing and formatting partitions. That's fine. What it's doing is it's taking the OS image that we flashed from Rufus and expanding it to fill the entire two terabytes of this NVMe that we've got. Like it says, do not switch off the device, just let it do its thing, and you should be up and running in no time. Cool, and there we are. We are at the Batacera main menu, and I can use my controller to access all the different emulators that are installed in here. 
Now obviously this is just the operating system, so there are no games or ROMs, and there are no system specific files like BIOS files or operating system downloads. All of that stuff you're gonna have to get yourself to start playing your games, but as far as the operating system and the emulators setup, we're pretty much done. We're booted into Batacera. Now to access the basic file structure of the system when you're gonna be adding your uh, games and system files over a USB stick or the network. There's lots of many ways to do it. You can check the Battis Error documentation on how to do it, but um, you can go ahead and hit F1 on the keyboard to show the file browser. And that shows you the basic file browser for Battis Error. And you can go ahead and plug in the USB drive and start copying your ROMs and your system files and stuff like that into the system. And that's how to install Batacera. So yeah, the operating system install is actually very simple and um, easy to do. All you have to do is again, flash the image to the drive and then throw the drive into a new system and then it boots right away and does all the resizing magic and everything to um, repartition the drive to take up all of the available space. Now you're probably gonna want to keep the Batacera documentation handy because there's a bunch of different shortcut keys and stuff with, that you can use with a controller to control the emulators and stuff outside of the game that you're actually using the controller to play. So um, all of those will be nice to keep handy. But besides that, that's the install process for Batacera on a 64-bit uh, modern-ish computer. So if you guys have any tips or tricks for uh, new time Batacera users, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of little tips and tricks for navigating and managing ROMs and dealing with all the little like emulator scaling and all that sort of stuff. So go ahead and drop that in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.